All right. Well, hey, my name is Lee West. I'm the pastor of Cheers Church. And today we're going to be talking about in our discussion, uh, the environment of the heart soil. And this is part three. So we've taken this from the passage of the parable of the sower in Luke chapter eight. But it's interesting that the other version in Mark chapter four, and I want to bring this scripture up on the screen here. Uh, Mark chapter four, verse 13 says, and he said to them, uh, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all of the parables? So it's pretty clear there that Jesus is saying that if you don't understand this parable, which is the parable of the sower, how can you understand any of the other parables, which was actually part of the teachings on the kingdom? So he's saying, if you don't understand the parable of the sower, how can you understand the kingdom? So it's important for us to dive in, to, to understand, to study, know how to apply this passage in our life, or else we're really not going to completely understand the kingdom and how the kingdom works. So today we're going to be talking uh, specifically about the second soil. Last week we talked about the first soil. And that was where the devil comes and steals the word or the seed out from the hearts. And so the people can't believe. Well, today, the second soil is uh, about the word of God falling on rocky ground. When uh, people receive the word of God, they receive it with joy, but then in time fall away when temptation comes or trouble comes. But there's two interesting culprits here in this soil. So let's take a look at this passage in Luke chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. It says, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devour it. Now, here is the second soil. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. So now let's take a look at the explanation that Jesus gives in regards to this second soil. So Luke chapter 8, verse 13 says, But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root. Okay, so no root, that's the first one, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. So we have two culprits here. One is that they didn't have any root, and then the second is, in times of temptation or difficulty, they fall away or give up. And so we're going to concentrate on those two things today. Having no root, what does it mean to not have any roots? And then the second thing is, why do we give up so early uh, when difficult times come? So I, I looked up, you know, one of the f more famous or well-known uh, plant uh, companies is called Bonnie Plants. So I took a look at their website and I wanted to kind of find out a little bit about the root system and um, why it's so important to have roots and how do you get roots if you have a plant that's cut and there is no roots anymore. Um, so the first thing we notice is that with the word root, when it says having no root in that passage of scripture, the root word root means an anchorage or a support. So when the roots go down, it anchors the plant, supports the plant. It's the underground part of a seed plant body that functions as an organ of absorption, aeration, and food storage. So not only is the roots going down to anchor and support the plant, but they're also acting as a way to receive or absorb the nutrients from the soil or the water and, uh, and, and store food for the plant so that it actually bears fruit and becomes healthy. So here's a quote from Bonnie Plant's website. It says, did you know that what you see above ground in your plants is really determined by what's hidden uh, underground? So what happens underground where the plant roots live drives the plant growth. Interesting, right? What's not seen underground is what actually determines the health of what the plant where you do see. So for us spiritually, right, is sometimes is it the health of our inside, our soil, our soul, our heart? Is it the health of that that actually determines 
what what happens to us on the natural or in the physical, the the unseen affecting the seen. And then it says here, what do uh, healthy roots do? They provide the anchor needed to keep a plant in place. More importantly, roots are the lifeline of a plant, taking up air, water, nutrients from the soil, moving them into the leaves where they can interact with sunlight, produce the sugars, flavors, and energy for the plant. And this, where Bonnie says, uh, Bonnie Plant says, this is the magic of how things grow. We can see the parallel spiritually in this. Roots are the lifeline of the plant, taking up air, water, and nutrients from the soil and moving them up into the leaves, which is in the natural and physical. In the same way, we read this scripture where it says the seed uh, on the parable of the sower, the seed fell on rocky ground and having no root. So if it has no root, it has no way of anchoring itself. It has no way of absorbing nutrients and it has no way of actually living or surviving. So the bigger and healthier the root system, the bigger and healthier the plant. So how big and healthy is your root system spiritually? Are you uh, planted in the soil of God's Word, and is it your anchor, and are you absorbing the nutrients from the Word of God so that you produce healthy fruit? So uh, how do you get a system of good, healthy roots? Well, Bonnie Plant says healthy, deep soil. And you know what? The Word says that as well. Good seed just means a potential harvest, but that good seed's got to be planted in good soil. And we know that from the parable of the sower, the seed was the same for all four soils. So that wasn't the problem with the seed. It was a problem with the soil. And we also know that the soil uh, in the parable of the sower represents our heart. So our heart condition actually determines the health of the seed or the plant that's producing. The second thing here is about giving up. This is a very natural tendency for all of us when difficult time comes or temptation. And in the word here, it says, it uses the word temptation, but it's it means a time of proving, a trial of a person's fidelity, integrity, virtue, uh, constancy, meaning dependability, faithfulness, enduring. So it's a time of proving of your dependability, your faithfulness, your endurance, and your ability to unchange or unwaver in times of difficulty. So, but here are some common reasons uh, that people give up. These are just very natural. Number one, they want the outcome more than they want to obtain the skill. We all dream of doing something big and something amazing and, um, and prestigious maybe, but how many of us actually put in the work and the steps to become what we want. I, I've often said that I want a black belt in Kung Fu, but you know what? I've never taken a lesson. So how am I going to get a, a black belt in Kung Fu if I don't put in the time? It's the fact that I don't want to put in the five years of discipline and commitment to get the black belt. I just want the black belt skills, right? And that's kind of how we all are. We want those, we want the fruit, but we don't want the labor that goes into producing that fruit. There's a spiritual significance to this. We all say that we want to be or do something great in the kingdom, but we just don't want to sacrifice the time or energy to do it. And the temptation there is the lack of commitment, laziness, or complacency. The second reason people quit is they fear failure and what people will think when they fail. So this is like the self-sabotage. Um, you see failure coming and you bail out, you make up an excuse to quit or to just uh, leave the project or whatever the, the endeavor that you're involved in, and you bail out before failure actually hits. Um, you self-sabotage yourself because you don't want to experience the failure and you don't want other people to see you fail as well. And the spiritual significance there is that we know we are to do something, but fear is holding you back, and the temptation is pride. The third thing, the reason why people quit is they would rather throw in the towel than pivot or make changes. So there's not one company that knew exactly what it was going to be in every way, shape, and form 
when it's it began from the onset, it just doesn't exist. Name a company that started out that is that looks the same way today as it did when it started out. Companies had to make pivots. They've got to change. Well, the spiritual significance in this is that we also have to change. And but it's a wine skin, right? We get used to a certain wine skin. We get stuck in tradition. But here God is telling us in, in the scriptures, put on a new wine skin. Why? Because he wants to put new wine into us. So we have to pivot in our journey to a new wine skin. The temptation here is to be stuck in tradition. The fourth thing, reason uh, why people quit is they get distracted by someone else doing it. Um, in an analogy, people give up eating what's on their plate because they <laughs> want what they see on somebody else's plate, right? The comparison is never good. How many times have you compared yourself to somebody else? Comparison always leads to disappointment. So distractions, here's the significance, the spiritual significance, is distractions are a way of the devil using you as a puppet, right? Just making you move in all different directions, uh, chasing that new shiny. Well, the temptation here is the lack of patience and self-control. And the last reason here why people quit is they don't believe in themselves uh, enough. The most um, overused but uh, brutally true cliche known to man is the fastest route to abandoning your goals is the lack of self-belief. So do you believe in yourself? Do you believe in what God's called you to do? Do you believe in who you are in the kingdom? Um, no matter how talented you are, no matter how many opportunities are handed to you on a silver platter, right? If you lack belief in yourself, you will always find a way to squander it. The spiritual significance here is you have to know who you are in the kingdom, who God's created you to be, and know that God is on your side helping you. The temptation there is doubt and unbelief, obviously. So I know that God has spoken to many of you. You know what you're supposed to be doing in the kingdom of God, but you either have uh, just given up too soon or too early, um, or you've just not planted yourself in an environment that's producing roots. Now, that root system can, can be applied to anything. It can be applied to finances. If you're having trouble financially, how, what kind of environment are you in that will allow you to learn and grow in finances? What books are you reading? What podcasts are you listening to? As you soak in that environment, you're going to grow roots financial roots, that's going to help you absorb health into your finances. Same way with your emotions or your spiritual life or relationships or your marriage. What kind of environment are, is your marriage in that is allowing you to put roots down to absorb good nutrients into your marriage that produces a healthy marriage? So I've got some discussion questions here. Um, there's quite a few, actually, so just bear with me as I, I read these. Number one, is there something from the Word of God that you don't have any root in? Meaning, maybe there's a topic that you just have not soaked in or understand. Could be like healing or God's correction. Number two, if roots need healthy soil to grow and produce, what do you need to do to your soil that will allow the roots to develop and become a solid anchor for the Word of God? But number three, what is the condition of your heart's soil? Number four, are you willing to put in the dirty work that may take years to produce? Are you willing to have the discipline and commitment that it will take to succeed? Number five, are you willing to face your fear of failure and what others may think or say about you to accomplish what God has called you to do? Number six, are you willing to allow a new wineskin a new way of thinking or doing something to help propel your vision. You will need to pivot along the way. Number seven, are you willing to protect yourself from distractions and not compare yourself to others, which is very difficult to do, that may be doing the same type of ministry or work that you're doing? And the last question here is, are you willing to believe in yourself and who God has made you and designed you to be embracing the fact that God has got you, that he's with you, that he's working with you, and he's working something in you. Well, I hope these discussion questions will spur good topic dialogue uh, today in your group. I know we're going to have a great discussion 
on this as well in our group that we have on Sunday. So, uh, you know, and, and just an activity here for you as well, not only as you discuss this topic today, but choose something that you are tempted to give up on and take a step forward, solidifying your commitment to carry on. So if there's something that in your life that you want to give up on, take a step forward, making that commitment, right? It's that symbolism. I'm going to, I'm going to take a step forward and, and move forward on this calling on this work I've got to do. And that just solidifies that you're not going to give up that you're taking steps to move forward. So have a great discussion today and God bless you. And we'll see you in the next video.